We put in a complaint to Disney Cruise Line. This is my favorite time to be on the ship. 6.20 in the morning and everyone's asleep. Why are you running so slow? The second morning, Heather was actually served rancid pancakes. Oh, no, we're, oh, 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 oh. we're off to dinner. We're taking a break from our regularly scheduled RV travels across the US with our preschoolers to share our experience of uh, an opportunity to do a Disney cruise. We did the Halloween on the High Seas cruise in September on the Disney Fantasy. This video is all about whether or not it lives up to the hype. So stay tuned to find out. Let's start with the positives. Here's what the Disney Cruise Line did exceedingly well. Hit number one was the onboard entertainment. So whether it was the, the pool, the coffee shop, the bars for adults, the, they've got a movie theater and a theater theater and a big screen next to the pool showing basically Disney movies all day. We especially liked the Broadway style shows. Yeah, those those shows were very high caliber. They were well done. The um, talent in them was exceptional and they were only an hour. So it was really nice and they coincided with your dinner time. So you're scheduled at dinner time and if you're at the early dinner then you went to the later show and vice versa. Um, they were the perfect amount of time for our kids and for us. There was the character interactions, so you know, Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and all the princesses are walking around, so it's always fun to just spontaneously stumble across those. Yeah. Uh, daily activities, they had the Oceaneers Club, which you can drop off your kids and leave them for extended periods. Uh, they had a super cool hand washing machine. And genuinely, I was thinking about buying one of those for our house because they were super duper cool. It automatically washed their hands with the perfect temperature and the perfect amount of soap. I gotta go because they're running into the ocean. Why are you running so slow? We've had to move locations because the boys were running into the ocean. This is the standard. So we're now over here. This is The Knob, which is in Falmouth, Massachusetts, right on Cape Cod. All right, I'm back. Here we are at our second location. <laughs> so hit number two was Castaway Key, which was Disney's private island in the Bahamas. It's basically a private beach with snorkeling. It's not crowded, you're very spread out. You're getting drinks on the beach, they cater for you for your lunch. Soft serve ice cream is there. Yeah, well. they have the unlimited soft serve ice cream. Okay, so it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's your own private beach with plenty of shade. It's not too crowded. Everybody's spaced out. There is kind of an upcharge on everything else, so. Floats over here, 15 bucks. Snorkel rental, which I just got for one adult is $38. There's stingray experiences, paddle boats, kayaking. It's all an upcharge, so they're making the money back. You know, it'd be a little bit nicer if some of those were free options for what you pay for the cruise, but I really shouldn't complain. But here I am, complaining anyway. Complaining in paradise, that's what Scottish people do. We found the perfect spot. The boys here are playing in the shade. So we did snorkeling in the morning and then there was a thunderstorm passed through. Everybody ran back on the ship and then we stayed so the header could do snorkeling as well. Storm has passed, normal service has resumed. It's still raining a little bit, but we're gonna go back snorkeling. Over there. Uh, two thirds of the ship are back on board. As it starts storming. Worth it! It was cool because you just, you just walk off the ship and then you're on the beach and whatever you wanna do, you can kinda do it. Whereas the other excursions, you really had to pick something to do Otherwise, there wasn't much at the docks other than the shops. 
Okay, number three, kid-friendly activities. There was pretty much something every couple of hours and in the Disney app, it gives you all of the activities for the day so you can kind of look ahead and favorite the ones you want to do. And the Oceaneers Club obviously is available all day to drop the kids in, but they're always doing open houses, meaning you can go in with your kids if they don't want to go in without you. And they would do like, um, you know, box car derby, like build cars for the movie Cars. They would do meet and greets with uh, Avengers, got the theater shows and the movies on all the time. The other thing that we really liked on this, on this fantasy was the pools, pools and the water slide. So they have the aqueduct, which is a water slide that goes around the entire um, top deck and they had several pools as well, which was really neat. There was a Mickey-shaped toddler pool or just waiting pool right in front of the TV screen so you can be watching your movie while your kids are splashing around and playing. We stayed out there a lot and I found that actually quite relaxing. And the slides were really neat. There was a Mickey Mouse slide for little kids, which Cooper went on, said it was really fun. And then David and I did the aqueduct. And actually David and Coop Logan did the aqueduct as well. Aqueduct, because it's duck tails. Aqueduct, that's right. Um, it's a play on words. Right. There was also a Nemo's Reef, which was kind of like a little splash pad for kids. So that was nice to, in case you didn't want to get wet, but your kids really wanted to get wet and play, then they could kind of splash around the splash pads. Head number four, exploring the Disney Fantasy ship. On its own, it's kind of a destination, the ship. You could spend a week there, which we pretty much did. There's so much to explore. The ground lobby to the themed restaurants. There was three different types of restaurants. Animator's Palette was the best one that was really on cool. this ship. This is built-in entertainment for the children. All the different pools, the adult pools, the kid pools. And even the, the little hidden nooks and crannies, there was a, a really cool detective game that helped you explore the ship. It was interactive for the boys to play, so stuff like that was fun. I really just like exploring and enjoying the, the layout and the design. And you know, the, the co couple of coffee shops that do little characters for you. This is my favorite time to be on the ship. 6.20 in the morning and everyone's asleep. It's nice and quiet. What was your favorite parts of the ship? Um, my favorite part was definitely the, the pool with the big movie screen in front of it. There was always uh, ice cream that the kids could have. And then there is an adult only pool, um, which was nice just for sitting. There was a lot of seating areas and there was actually a, a swim up a wet bar essentially um, where you could have your feet in the pool and be drinking your cocktails. The cabins were actually a plus so they were they were really good for a family like us where you have you have the main bed you have kind of a curtain that separates from where the kids are going to be and there was a pull down bunk bed a pull out sofa and a, another fold down bed, Murphy bed plus the veranda Murphy bed and you had the option of an adjoining room if you had other family traveling with you. Plenty of space for a week for a cruise ship. Okay, so that takes us to the big miss, which was the dining experience. So in general, I'm not a very picky person when it comes to eating. We've been on one other cruise and it was not one of the luxury cruises, let's put it like that. And our recollection of the cruise food was that it was really, really good. Just myself, I felt like the food was very average. Uh, you know, it was nothing special that you couldn't get at a restaurant, a chain restaurant. Uh, Heather, on the other hand, needs a gluten-free, dairy-free, almond-free. Shellfish-free. And one of the big things we were looking forward to on the ship was that you have your own staff in the dining room. You tell them what you need once and then they follow you around to each of the restaurants and we thought there would be really good gluten-free options because obviously Disney Cruise is a, is a huge operator. Lots of people have gluten-free needs and the experience was terrible. It was a huge miss yeah. right from the get-go. We spoke to guest services about it. We spoke to the restaurant managers about it and they, they promised the earth and they did not deliver. We kept getting reassured that things would improve, but they didn't. Whether it was the main dining rooms or especially restaurants, the gluten-free process was just not good. Yeah, it wasn't great. When you tell them that you have a food allergy, they 
um, kind of drop everything, bring a manager over, and you have to fill out a form explaining what you would like to eat. Um, but you're not given like a menu necessarily that says like these are things that we can prepare for you. They just say you can you can have anything on the menu. The second morning, Heather was actually served rancid pancakes, so they basically tasted like vinegar. So bad. That was the gluten-free pancakes that were provided, and that was after a 30-minute wait. So that was that was really the tipping point. We'd had a bad experience on day one with the process. They didn't really have good options. Heather kept getting offered salads, and sorbet was kind of all they could produce, even though they're saying, hey, pick something on the menu and we'll make it happen. Uh, so that's why it needs a gluten-free menu so you don't feel like you're an outsider, yeah. and so you know what you can get, and they should be able to rustle up in 10, 15 minutes. What we ended up doing was getting room service for breakfast for the boys a couple times, several times, which was, you know, dry stuff, cereal, muffins, toast, stuff like that. It's really not the staff's fault, it's really the process. So there, there's no set gluten-free menu. Hey, Logie. <laughs> what have you got to say about the Disney cruise? What's this one come out? That's so fun at our bedroom. Yeah, remember the, the, the bedroom that we have, the Mickey one? Yeah. You like the bedroom? Yeah, the bedroom that has the Mickey. And, and, and every time you call, the, the server that give you food. So translation, uh, room service was Logan's favorite. What was your favorite? What about you, Cooper? What was your favorite part of the Disney cruise? Getting the door and opening it. Okay. Getting the what? Getting the door and opening it? Yeah. In the rooms? No. No. On the bathroom. Oh, yes. Oh, there was, there was, I love that. <laughs> there was two doors to, there's one to like the sink and the shower, and there's one to a sink and a toilet, which is a good idea when you have a family of four and Cooper was obsessed with opening and shutting all those doors. So that was his favorite part of the cruise. <laughs> but you just you just can't get that sort of stuff anywhere else. That was experience, my God. Right? Logan yeah. has to go potty, of course. He needs to do that every 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna finish off the concluding points here because we'll never have time to record us again anyway with these two. Ultimately, a standard gluten-free menu is a must. We put in a complaint to Disney Cruise Line uh, they did speak with me the other day and said they're taking that into consideration. They said 400 people of the 3,000 odd on the ship had dietary restrictions, so there's obviously the market there to do that. First impressions mean a lot. Our first impression for, of the food for the first couple of days uh, was really ruined and it took an emotional toll the rest of the week as we, we started to avoid the main dining rooms because they were really trying to make up for this shortcoming so much. They were kind of just harassing us, making sure everything was okay instead of just leaving us to enjoy our dinner. Uh, you know, there wasn't much else they could do since the process wasn't very good. Final thoughts, are Disney cruises overrated? Well, there's some amazing aspects on a Disney cruise. The Most of the experience was fantastic. It was really, you know, memories that we will cherish. But you might be in for a shock if you have dietary restrictions. For us, it was definitely not worth the premium price tag. Depends on how, how much you love Disney, I guess. And I think it would have been, yeah, if it wasn't for the dining, unfortunately, that we were really looking forward to because, you know, the best things about Disney cruises included the, the fact that your dining staff followed you from restaurant to restaurant, so they really got to know you. And by the end, of your cruise, they were like your favorite people. Let us know what you think. Have you been on a Disney cruise? What was your experience? Do you have dietary needs? Have you been on a Disney cruise? Have you experienced something like this? Did you know there's a cruise line that actually charters for celiacs? So this was a special break from our RV life. Uh, we'll get back to our regularly scheduled travels around the US with these two celiacs. Uh, but this is us from The Knob on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, after being back on shore for a couple of days, signing off. Until next time, see ya!